there he is. Hi. Hi, brother. Hello, sister. How are you? I'm good. We just finished some dinner and all the babies are happy and the sun is out, which is like amazing. Is the sun out there? It was today. It was like 72, sunny. I had my shirt off, just running around playing. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. I missed it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's been like three months since I've seen this kind of sun, even though we had it like a week ago. <laughs> a week's a long time out here with no sun. Seriously, I know. I got out there today. I'm like, what do I do in the sunshine? How do I act? It <laughs> felt so good. Just stand there and soak it all in. Yeah. Yeah, well, to anybody who is joining this, this is my brother-in-law, Mike. He is an all-around amazing human being. And it makes me really excited that we're gonna get to chat here. And you all will really just get to even have a taste of who Mike is. He's gonna be co-leading a new experience that I'm hosting called Rewriting, well, it, it doesn't have an official name, but we're talking about rewriting the story of the masculine within it. And I'm really excited because not only is it like, it just feels really important to me. And Mike, I'd love for you to talk to this too, if you feel inspired to. But to me, it feels really important to have a space where when we are rewriting our story of the masculine, which can be money, God, business, men, and many other things. When we rewrite our story with that, it's so important to not only have like a feminine perspective, like myself, someone who has chosen to rewrite her story with the masculine and continues to do so but to also have a man present and not just any man but a man who had chosen to write rewrite his story with the masculine and become his most divine masculine self and i've really gotten to see you step into that mike and it's just been like like just so amazing I was telling somebody today who was talking to you about the experience that I was like, honestly, I kind of just like want you to be in there to experience Mike. Like, I want you to see like this man who is really living in his masculine because not a lot of women have honestly experienced that. Like we've seen a lot of men, we've been around a lot of men, but not a lot of men who have chosen to step into their highest and their greatness and really be like, those like divine allies for the feminine yeah it's it's, it's it feels like in 2023 we're starting to like really see what we would say the divine masculine really starting to show up maybe it's because we have the internet and we're seeing it so easily on the internet and we're seeing great examples of it on the internet as well as maybe not great examples of, of masculine and feminine mm -hmm. um i know in my in my personal journey it was literally sitting there one day and just taking accountability of myself and saying, wait a minute. And the, the biggest thing that I realized, which is what you'll see on my uh, avatar, it's not my face on Instagram, but it says, I realized as I'm publishing my writings about realizations I had of myself was I don't know how I operate as my own divine self. And that was uh, a big thing for me was to just to look at each little part of myself. And on the other end of that, obviously, I'll be doing it the rest of my life. But for two and a half years, I said, wow. And uh, now where I am today, it's like I can see now what men are talking about when they're leading and supporting at the same time. I can see now what men are talking about, what it means to stand in their masculine and, and, and be divine in their self, but also be a loving human being and, and to have a balance of their feminine and masculine and being able to walk in that and, and talk in that at the same time. So amazing. Yeah, it's been absolutely exciting, exhilarating, fun to watch you on that journey and to just be around you because it's so nice to be around you. Like you can just feel how you've chosen that and how you've integrated it. And it's just, yeah, it's like delightful to be around. And I think that truly we as women, we wanna like, if we are in our feminine, we love being delighted by the masculine. We absolutely love it. Whether it's like, I'm thinking about like fries. He's four, says he's five though. He's four technically by the world's standards, but not by 
the other standards. Um, you know, and he'll just like pick a flower and bring it over to me and be like, hey mom, put this behind your ear. Like, it's those like little things that delight us that the masculine does. And like, honestly, naturally does because he's got it. All the kids right. have it. There's a certain age where it gets conditioned, but it's pretty natural. Yeah, I mean, it seems like we get to a point, whether no matter what, who we are in life, that we start to be taught how to do things to be able to impress or to be seen or be loved or to get somebody to notice us, whatever it may be. And so we get, to, you know, we get to this point where we start to do that and then we don't realize that the energy that we're actually giving a flower to a woman as a man, let's say, is from a place of quite possibly manipulation or from a place of see me or from a place of like, I wasn't cared for by my mother and we're trying to be cared for by a woman in that regard. What the plethora of different reasons why we might be doing it. And then you get, you know, hopefully everybody will get to a point in their life where it's like, I'm just doing that like four year old fries. Cause I, cause I, I want to, cause I, I know I can, and I'm just doing it for that reason. And that's, yeah. And that's when it's just pure innocence and you know we lose that sometimes over a lifetime i get it but we don't have to totally yeah that word pure is what came to mind too mm -hmm. um, and months. yeah months is here what's up MC? bringing the the cat masculine in <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we kind of talked a little bit about um you know, sharing on, there's so many specifics to rewriting your story with the masculine and a lot of like women and people who are in their feminine essence are having a different experience with the masculine right here in this current moment. And there's a few that we would like to talk on all at different times, but today I felt really good to just talk on the subject of a woman or somebody in their feminine essence who has their partner, their male male essence partner, who's sh who they're separated from. So this is one scenario um, who they're separated from and desire to be in relationship with, but the partner keeps saying they're going to be better and then going back and disappointing her. So that's like one element of that wounded masculine that uh, I feel like a lot of women experience. And it's, you can definitely be experiencing that even if you're not like separated from someone you're married to, you could be experiencing that separated from someone you're dating or just a friend or anything. I mean, this applies to a lot of different topics, but that was something that felt fun to at least, you know, dive into because it's such a, it's such a big one. And honestly, and it's truly like talks about the one specific male archetype and a, a female archetype that believes a certain thing to call that behavior in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a big point is to, to calling that behavior in. I, I'm in my late 30s now. I don't know. It really wasn't talked about accountability and responsibility of self. Um, and sometimes when you, when you talk to people about accountability and responsibility of self, it, 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 is, can, it can be a trigger for people. It can feel hurtful for people. It can say, but I am responsible for myself. I, I take care of myself. And there's many different definitions of taking care of yourself and, and being accountable for yourself. But the one thing that wasn't happening is people weren't taking accountability for like their thoughts that led to their actions. And what I'm starting to see now, and this might not apply to everybody, but I do think it applies to a lot of the world, is a lot of our thoughts come from a place of our conditionings. And if we don't get to a place of honoring that, wait a minute, what I'm thinking about my partner, about myself and my partnership, if we don't get to a place where we realize that most of our partnerships are based in the conditioning that we were born into, that we were forced upon us, that we saw growing up on TV, then we don't realize that we are just continually in a partnership that is part of our conditioning and not from a place of our, our truest self. And of course, naturally, we're going to be upset with our partner. Naturally, we're going to continue to see our partner letting us down. 
until we really pull back and realize that, wait a minute, it's not you, like it's not your fault that is happening, but it's the idea of saying, well, what am I attracting in? How did I attract this in? Where did I, what, 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 what would I do differently if I could choose to do it differently? In terms of the foundation of being with somebody. I, I ran into a woman recently, like two weeks ago, and she's told me time and time again that she has a, uh, a soul connection with a gentleman who is in this world. And they're, they're not in communication. They have been before physically, and they're not right now. And long story short, I just listen to her talk. I don't even respond to her at this moment. Everything that she talks about, is 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 blocking her essentially from the relationship with her father that she spoke about to me. I won't mention her on here because of her, it's her world, but she's manifesting that same scenario with her, this man that she desires to be with physically, who can't get right in her mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then like, there's the concept too, where it's like, usually if you've got that most important person, most important relationship doing that, then that's not the only masculine relationship that it's showing up in. And usually or whatever you're experiencing with men and relationships and partners and how they show up or don't show up is really mirroring how money shows up for you as well. It's really mirroring how business, like God, that you know, all these things, like, like for, and everybody has their own things. Like not everybody feels that like God is in the masculine or money is in the masculine, but most people do without realizing it. It's like a subconscious programming. And so, yeah, there's like, it's not the old, and there's like other men who it's like, why are men always disappointing me? I hear that often. Like, why do men suck? Like, why are men always like not following through? Or why does this keep happening? And it's, it's one of those things where the more you ask yourself that question, why are, why do they suck? Why do they keep not showing up? Then you are not taking responsibility for a story, which is not yours, mm -hmm. but it is a story that's in you. So don't, don't take that responsibility of like owning that story. You don't need to own that story and create a new story. Happening and like turns out how you want it to turn out. But mm -hmm. you've got to know, like, if I'm experiencing this, if I'm seeing this is how men show up, then I have a story that this is how men are supposed to show up. And as mm -hmm. you mentioned, a lot of times that stems from a father, not always, but very frequently. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just huge what you said, sis, when you, when you mentioned that how it shows up in different parts of your life. And, and those are the, I was actually talking to my mom two days ago. I was like, it's being present in the moment. And obviously that, you know, look into your lives. If you're listening to this, look into your life, like where, where are you not being present? And then, you know, almost challenge yourself to remain present in different parts in different times of your life to see like, wait a minute, this is showing up right here. Just like it shows up in a, in a partnership, whatever it may be, like you said, relationship is money. And you start to see what, what people would you saw synchronicities. Sometimes people call them coincidences. And you're like, it's, it, at first you're like, this is crazy. This is mind blowing. I, I thought about this yesterday that happened today, that how it's how somebody showed up or, or about, I was having an argument with my partner yesterday. And then the next day, I was having an argument with the banker, you know, it's like, wait a minute, that's the exact same scenario, just different people, just different energies in that moment. And like you said, it's, it's honoring, because you said this as well, it's honoring that that is your truth. If that happened, if you're, if it's happening, it's probably happening multiple times and it doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. It's just honoring that what is like, what is happening to you. And the moment you can honor that, it's like a weight lifted off your chest at first. And then you're like, wait a minute, I'm starting to see the world a little bit differently now. And I, this is, I'm speaking from experience. Anybody who's listening, I'm just speaking from my own experience of like looking at myself and being like, I've, I'll say it time and time again, I, I've lived a good life and I was ready to be my greatest self. And what did that mean? It literally meant looking at myself <clears throat> and tearing things off of me, tearing things out of me 
in the most kind way possible and not shaming myself for any conditioning that were upon me and just recognizing for what is and then honoring them and learning how to love them and watching new ways usher in. Because I realized over time through my realization journey in the last two and a half years that oh, I started to do the same things I'd always done in life just differently as I was honoring the conditioning that placed these things into my life i still was doing the things just without with devoid of conditioning so i was doing them differently I was doing how i desire to do them and when, when anybody can show up that way it, it changes the game seriously yeah and i think it talks a lot about the concept of awareness you know, and how like the awareness is here now and what it shows up is that moment of like okay, I can pretend like this isn't here anymore or I can show up to it, but I, I'm at this point now where if I pretend it's not real, I don't know that it's like a trying to push a, a volleyball or a, any kind of ball down into water. It's just going to like right yeah. back up to the top. Yeah. So it's like once you have awareness, it really does change everything. Yeah. And imagine it can feel really challenging to like go there avoiding and checking out distracting themselves with food them feeling suppressed and like not really aware because like certain foods wake us up and certain foods close us down and like mm -hmm. make us foggy and grassy. like if you're eating certain things you're gonna feel like awake and alive and vibrant and clear and you're gonna need to I'm having so trouble hearing you a little bit. You can miss it whenever you have a word. Sure. I wonder if it's my service. I'm going to like shift it a little bit over here. Yeah, it seems like it's hearing you. It's doing well now. That's you you say, I was kind of catching some words. You were talking about consciousness and, and not as like consciousness and spirituality, but just being conscious of like literally like your stories and what's happening. And then once you start doing it, you can't really go back from it because you start seeing it every moment. Exactly. Yeah. And I was giving an example of food because there's like a million things that we will use to check ourselves out or suppress ourselves to stop us from seeing what is so clear and so real. Um, and food is one of those things where it's like certain foods are going to suppress you and make you, you know, foggy and groggy and not be able to like see what's real. And certain foods are going to wake you up and open your eyes and make you aware and a lot of people avoid those foods and are like, oh, I just can't eat that way or that's not for me or it's so hard or whatever because they don't realize they're doing that so that they don't see what's there. Yeah. And when they, yeah. they see it, they're like, oh crap, I gotta do something about this. And then that mm -hmm. becomes a scary part, but truly it can become the fun part if you are willing to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel it's like What'd you say? It's just amazing how many times things will smack us in the forehead. It will just show up in different ways. Same way, over, same thing over and over, just showing up in different ways. And when you finally realize, like, wait a minute, that's, I've been getting this message the whole time. <laughs> and it's like, oh, man. And then you're like, but, but it's going to keep coming back. Like you said that ball you push down, it's, it's going to keep coming back. And, and you know, relating this back to what we first brought up when we first started talking about is in a partnership, you're going to continue to be disappointed by your partner, whoever it is, if you're separated and want to get back together. Or you, you, you're seeing a change in them, but they keep not being good enough until what needs to be honored needs to be honored. And it's nine out of 10 times if you're seeing something in them, which we all talk about this in the world now. So you're see, it's got to be something in yourself. But again, don't honor it to the fact that like it becomes your story. Just honor it as a story that was given to you. It was a gift that was given to you, and you don't want that gift any longer. You want it, you want your own gift, and you have the right to make your own gift and give your own gifts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we both have been through our own worlds of, in partnership and seen um, through it all like, like how quickly – you can change by just rewriting your stories and more specifically for you and rewriting the masculine and me rewriting my own masculine, how quickly my partnerships and who showed up and the kind of women that have showed up for me, how quickly that changes too. So fast. It's like, it's one of those things. It's like unbelievable, but believable at all at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh my goodness. And 
that's I've been talking about that a lot as I've been like creating content about this experience because it's like you want to watch something happen fast well you allow yourself to go there which most people say don't go there don't go there don't go mm-hmm. wherever someone says don't go there go go <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a good place to go <laughs> yeah go to that place and that's what we're gonna do in the experience like we want you to understand that like that's we're gonna go full on we're going there like you're by you saying yes to this experience you are choosing to go there and i believe it's a lot more pleasant of an experience if you go there with people who get it and have gone there many times themselves and can like hold that space for you and that's why we're hosting this and leading it together because we want to hold space for you as you go there yeah i mean and, you know, and, and, I, and I genuinely believe, like, who's supposed to come in will come in, who's not is not. And that genuinely just comes down to the energies that, that we draw in, that we're holding in ourselves. And, and they'll see, they'll see people, I, I know I will see, I see so much clarity just guiding myself and others. I, I've been a teacher for 16 years. I've worked in different, many different facets and I work as an actor now and, whether I'm on set guiding as an actor or I'm in a classroom teaching and I'm about to start teaching again as an acting coach in a classroom, I'm never not learning. And that's because I'm hearing myself and because I can hear myself, I hear others. But I had to learn how to hear myself. I had to learn how to see myself. I had to learn how to feel myself. And that's that took – yeah, that's the work people talk about that we 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 don't everybody say well how am i going to do this how am i going to do this how do i do this and it's literally all inside of us and now it's like the easy answer to say it's obviously a journey but next thing you know you start going inside going places that people tell you not to go mm-hmm. and uh whew, it, it's it's it, it's nothing but beauty even the things that we thought weren't going to be beautiful or weren't beautiful or just over time, you know, we talked about the coffee shop recently, you know, you're doing something for, let's say an hour, 45 minutes in, you're like, I cannot do this anymore. I can't do whatever it is. And next thing you know, you're like, man, it's been an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's, it never doesn't do that. Like we, our, our mind, bodies and soul are miraculous in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were having that conversation and what I was sharing about was this, um, like somatic cathartic experience that I was a part of. And it was like an hour long thing. And by like the second minute, I was like, I think I'm capped to like, I think I'm fully done. Or we talked about birth, like when I was home birthing, you know, there's always a moment that women giving birth hit where they're like, I can't do this. And then you do it and then you just keep going. But I think something that I really liked that you said, and it, it, you know, spoke to me, was about like being seen and being heard. And I also feel like it's gonna be extremely valuable for anyone who does not feel seen, does not feel heard in their relationship to come into this safe space with us. And no, you're gonna be seen by both of us. You're gonna be heard by both of us. Your feelings are gonna be valid. Your feelings are gonna be real. And we'll be able to support you and guide you because there's a lot of people who don't have that. And especially if your partner is someone who's like, who's like, oh yeah, I'm going to show up like this amazing person. And then they like come in the next minute doing the thing that you left them for and like going back to their old patterns and their old beliefs and behaviors. Like you don't feel seen. You don't feel heard when someone's doing that to you. You feel like there's... Yeah. So it's a really good space to like have that feeling experience. Like there's nothing in my opinion as valuable as actually feeling what it feels like to have the thing on the other side of what you want. So like anytime I've seen something about myself that I was like, oh, that's not serving me or that has to go. That's extremely limiting. Then it gets to that point where I'm like, okay, well, what do I what would be great (laughs) what would be best case scenario in this arena and a lot of times i'm just like i don't know because i didn't experience it growing up 
I'm not experiencing it now. So I've attracted all these people and things into my life that just mirror all that back to me. So I've never actually even seen the, the best case scenario or the thing that I would hope to be true. So you can find that within yourself. You have it all in you. Mm -hmm. um, it's also so nice and helpful to just actually like feel it from other people. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times when I've been like, okay, I see what the thing is, but it feels so far away and I don't know, like, how does that person act? Or how would a person like that operate their day or something to be surrounded with somebody who or multiple people who have had that experience and done it and are there it's like so valuable because you're like mm -hmm. oh gotcha i know how yeah. to be my version of what yeah. that thing is my version of that's the beautiful thing i, I where I've, I've stepped into it probably the last year or two as i walk around the world and people are drawn to me and i'm drawn to them is I've really just learned how to reflect their selves back to them by way of me. And it's been very helpful for myself to be able to just honor in the moment that, oh, this person is, for whatever reason and way, is a mirror with me and of me. And I'm going to mirror it back to them. And to do that, we were talking about being seen and being heard and being felt. Like, to be able to do that at just at face value, once people, like, realize, like, oh, I'm learning myself by being mirrored and by being reflected back upon and not just being told how to do something, which is how, how they were done their entire life. This is how you should live your life, which is why we're looking to rewrite our stories now, which is what is happening in a, in a collective of humans across the world. And we literally have, like you were mentioning earlier, like not knowing because you never saw it growing up not knowing how to do something imagine a world where everybody gets to just create exactly how they do it in a kind way where they're not just hurting not hurting anybody but they're not and they're very kind themselves but they can define their system exactly how they desire to and then figure out how their system aligns with all the other systems in the world yeah and just live in that joy like you live i mean i say we say it's a lot and you get to enjoy being in joy mm -hmm. Like, come on, man. What more is there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because that is, like, such, like, especially in the coaching industry there and, like, online space where so many people are like, let me tell you how to do this. Let me give you the strategy. Let me give you the whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, those things, I've, like, had my own personal experiences with this. Those mm -hmm. things can only work if that strategy feels good to you or that thing feels good to you or that how-to feels good to you, that can only work when you remember who you are inside of your own self. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just messy. There were so yep. many times, so many things I paid so much money for, so many coaches I hired, so many things that I look back on and I'm like, I didn't need to know how to do it. I just need to, needed to remember how to reconnect with myself yeah. through that channel. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of your journey and where you are today and your ability to literally just connect with yourself is phenomenal. Like, it's like, it's, it's, it's guided me. You know, your feminine presence has guided me. Your humanic presence has guided me. It's, it's, it's really uh, a blessing to, to be able to be guided and have that in my life. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for that acknowledgement. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. Yeah, feels nice. Yeah, it, it's a very different space. You know, it's it's moving from the feminine and, and we both, every person has masculine and feminine inside of them. And it's like, how much of your feminine are you in? How much are you masculine are you in? And like, of course there's like an intuitive nature to the masculine as well. Um, but the, the feminine, a lot of times loses their connection with their own um intuition when they're too far in their masculine and a lot of times they get pushed there and especially in this topic when it's like your partner you know you you've divorced your partner you're separated from your partner because they've been doing this thing and they say they're going to change and then they don't change like that puts a woman right into her masculine mm -hmm. she's got to take care of everything she's got to handle mm -hmm. it all and she's got to be strong too because what if he comes back and he hurts her and she, op she opens her heart and then he hurts her like it's just like a lot there and um you know as we mentioned it's such a story like you are ex if you're experiencing that if you're watching this and you are experiencing that just know if you don't already have this awareness around it just know that is a pattern in your life 
patterns can be changed. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a hundred million percent. You can change any pattern that you have. Mm -hmm. That's a pattern. And if that doesn't feel good to you any longer, you can shift it. You can make that change to the pattern and you're going to experience things based off of your new pattern or your new belief or your new story. Absolutely. You said it right there. Yeah. Yeah. When, and once they, once people feel that, that's why I tell people a lot of times, like you felt something new today, you can't go back. I mean, you're going to understand that old way, but God, going back to it, like, and it never fails. Like once you rewrite a story, once you start to operate differently, something pops up six, eight months down the road from your old story. It pops up. It's, if somebody might say God's testing you, the next person might say the universe is testing you, the next person might say your human mind is testing you, whatever it may be. It pops up and you're like, I see that. I cannot go back to that. I don't even know if I want to. It might make me physically ill to go back to it. Who knows, you know, how it manifests for everybody differently. And then it seems just like, oh, that's, that is the guidance. That is the learning. That is the truth of self. That is understanding self. Now, I'm not telling you what your truth is, anybody. It's just the idea of like, that's a truth that is coming up in you, for you, and you see it. When you recognize it, oh, it's been that the whole time? I've been seeing that my whole life. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, and, and now you can't not see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the part. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. And like that concept too, Mike and I talk about this frequently, but that's like, you know, you've shifted the pattern when it comes up and you see it and it, it might for a minute, like hold you or make you feel emotional and make you go like, <gasps> but you're going to see it right after that and just go, no, that's not for me. Or that is, yeah. We don't do that. Or that's not a pattern that's in my life anymore. And that's just not me. And that's how you know. And that's like the feeling that you get to have is like, if it's coming up for you now, and you just keep getting pulled into it and drug into it and emotional about it, and it's like taking over your mind and your life, and you can't get it out of your head, and it's stressing you out. And it's all of these things. Know that you on the other side of rewriting your story are going to be experiencing life where that's no longer happening, where you're going mm -hmm. to yourself and just being like, oh my gosh, this is so cool the way that they are showing up for me now. It's so cool the way that all men are showing up for me right now. Look at the way that money is pouring in right now because I feel supported by the masculine. Or I think the masculine can be consistent for me. You know, if you have this scenario that we're talking about today, you're not going to feel like the masculine is consistent for you. You're going to feel like it's very inconsistent. You're going to feel like it's unpredictable. You're going to feel like it pulls you in and then it spits you back out and it hurts you. You open your heart and then it hurts you and it breaks you. Yeah. Polarities. Yeah. What'd you say? Polarities. Polarities. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like I said to the other day, like when, once you, once you, once you recognize polarities and see them for what they are, polarities create balance. I mean, they, they, you know, in a, in, a, in a literal magnet, polarities are what create the balance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not in, you know, it, we just weren't, we weren't taught, we weren't shown, we weren't conditioned, however you want to look at it, to, to honor those polarities. And, you know, that's, like, like you mentioned, coming into a safe space, how whatever a safe space looks like, because it can be very different for di different people, for different cultures. And I understand that wholeheartedly coming into a space at face value and just being heard, being seen, being able to say, this is how I desire to be heard and seen. Mm -hmm. means you're going to be able to hear and see yourself. And then you're going to hear and see the polarities you're speaking about. You're going to hear and see what the, 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 the cycles that you've, as you've have been created for you that you've been in, or if you created yourself, whatever it may be. And, and then you start to find your, your own way and you start to feel your own way. And, and then actually now that I say that out loud, the way that happened is I said, I don't know how to be guided. Mm -hmm. My father passed at 20 years old. I didn't have a male figure in my life and I'm, and I'm late 30. So for almost 20 years and I reached out to two men in my life and, and both those men are in my life still to this day, three years later. And I love them dearly. Mm -hmm. And the journey with them has just been, and they actually ended up knowing each other. And I didn't know that till a year and a half in, oh, wow. but it was literally just that guidance. And it wasn't even like, Hey, well, how do I live my life? What do I do? It was just their sheer presence in my life. Mm. 
while I was looking into myself. Mm. I mean, it's, they, they don't even, they might not even know the threat, like what they've done. Wow. I mean, that's wow. How, how powerful, once we start to go in and look at ourselves, the guidance is, it's how powerful it all is. Wow. I didn't know that, that they, they also knew each other. That's wild. Yeah, I was sitting <laughs> in the house one day talking to one of them. I was like, hey, man, uh, you know, you know, so-and-so. And, -so, and uh, you know, I, I go see him every Sunday. He's like, yeah, I know. And we have, like, history together. Like, we, like, hung out and spent time. And I was like, oh, well, I didn't know that. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah, it was cool. Powerful. You know. Well, I think something that I'm feeling called to like share to for anybody who is having that experience with the masculine or anybody who's write, rewriting their story at all with their masculine, but especially someone who's rewriting it with a partner that they might be separated with or a, yeah, just a partner you might be separated with who keeps like showing up and then not showing up and back and forth. And you just want to, you know, be back in that partnership. You love them. You care about them. But they keep doing the same old thing over and over and over again. Um, so they feel like you could move forward on um, and take away from this video is to be with yourself. However that looks, because some people it's journaling. Some people it's just, you go outside in nature and you get like downloads or you just hear yourself. Some people want to audio record their own voice and then play it back for themselves. But do what it takes to think about and really write down how, like what is that person for you when they're consistent? What does that look like? Because I want you to identify if you can even picture it, mm -hmm. what it looks like for them to be at their greatest, at their highest and best, at their best case scenario, just really in their greatness. Like what does that look like? And I want you to, to do that simply to see, do you, do you can you recognize them there or not mm. because those two places are different beginning points so just take note of that if you want to share it with us in the comments like come back later and share it in the comments i think you can do that with instagram labs i don't know i don't know it's been two years since i've been on here yeah <laughs> but, but yeah i love it you that you left that you left off at that, that to uh to look at your partner and and would you even recognize them in their highest i mean it's, it's going to bring up a lot for people in, in a very, 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 very great way. You know, people are going to be able to, uh, to look at that and say, yeah, this is, uh, this is a spot that I, I've been blind to and I desire to see it more clearly now. Yeah, mm. for sure. Awesome. And for anybody who enjoyed this conversation, if you're like, wow, this was awesome and I would like more of this or I would like to go deeper on it and I like really want to be inside of this experience where you're rewriting the story of the masculine, you can private message me, Mike. I don't know if you want to do private messages or anything. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can message either of us um, and we'll send you the link to join us. We would love to invite you all to join us. We're going to be going deep on this. It's going to be such an experience. Every time we talk about it, we're just like, it, dude, it is an experience, an experience. Yeah. It's and gonna um, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really powerful. It will be one of the most life-changing things that you do. One of the best experiences of your lifetime. I can be certain of that. I can feel it in my body. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, if it's calling you, just message one of us and we'll, we'll get you the link. The price is going to go up this week. So um, if that matters to you, then make sure you message us soon. And thanks love you. for being on your mic. Yeah, I love you too. This is my first time being live on anything ever, except what? for TV. Yeah, like on, like, on the app, on a social media app, yeah. No way! Yeah, I've never done IG or Facebook or anything live, Twitter live, if they even have that, I don't know, yeah. Whoa, cool, yeah. that's extra special. Yeah, so thanks for being here with me. I appreciate you. Oh, yeah! <laughs> that's so fun, cool. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Leave any comments or questions that you want below, and we'll probably see you for another one soon. I want to be in here. Oh, the wait. End. Hold on one second. I want to be in here for the end. Oh, we got another divine masculine coming in and a divine feminine. Right. Be here for the end. Yeah. Bye. Peace. You see Uncle I'm on there?
Hi, my friends. Hi, Hi yay. <laughs> you already doing any meeting with now? With Michael. And who else? And everybody on Instagram. And whoever wanted to join in. Hi, yay. <laughs> Hi. Uh, <laughs> the little beautiful. party came in. Yeah, I brought the brought the oils in. <laughs> oh, thank so you. What else did you do on it? It was on Instagram. Just us two and everybody who joined in the comments. Do you want to say bye? Bye bye. 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 See you, fam. Bye, bye for us. Oh, you're gonna do it. Hit that little X. Love y'all. And then I thank you. Love you too.